G'day everyone. Day 8 of the uh, Advent Calendar of Circuits. Today we're doing a log ammeter. It's a very simple circuit. Uh, it uses a, uh, a the diode, uh, any old diode will do. Uh, we start here with a 1N4148, you know, standard signal diode, and we measure the voltage across it with using a, uh, a JFET to buffer it with a very high impedance, so not much current goes leaks through the, uh, the JFET, most of the current goes through the diode, and the old diode Shockley diode equation here tells us after you solve it, which is a truly horrible experience that they make you do in uni, you find basically that the voltage uh, across the diode is proportional to the logarithm of the current through the diode. You know, most people use the approximation 0.65 volts across the diode at room temperature. That's really a load of crap and it's quite a complicated uh, function of temperature and uh, the current through the diode. But for, for most purposes, for biasing transistors and things like that, the approximation works fine. Um, and for this device, obviously, the temperature um, variation is actually a problem. But the, all these measurements that I'm going to show in this video were taken around room temperature. And for you know, constant temperature, this device actually works pretty well. And you can calibrate it uh, for reasonable accuracy. Because we're only really interested in the order of magnitude of currents and resistances that we're going to measure with it it's fine for that and uh, and it does quite well. If you wish you can, I just used a multimeter to measure the uh, the source voltage if you wish you can build a um, a slope intercept um, amplifier to drive a moving coil meter or a, a multimeter if you want to have a you know zero to blah precise calibration. Um, I just drew a big table as you can see here uh, I started off with a 1N4148 and uh, later on I started using um, I used a 2N5484 uh, four, four, for the JFET and then I moved to the PN4117A which has a very very tiny leakage current and a very small IDSS so I had to change the resistance. Originally the source resistor was 1.5 kilo ohms, I changed this to 56k when I started playing with the, uh, the PN4117A um, and I uh, collected a whole bunch of numbers based on uh, the, the current through resistance. I ended up uh, it, while it's easy to measure uh, fairly large currents, unless you uh, have a, an op amp or something to measure very, very small currents, the burden voltage becomes a major problem. So it was easier just to work with the resistances. Now I have resistances in the junk box from you know, basically 0 up to 23 gig ohms. So I, I used those to give me a bunch of calibration points. And I repeated it also with a similar circuit here, which uses a MOSFET. Um, theoretically, the MOSFET has you know, essentially no has an infinite input impedance, but uh, the 2N7000 uh, that I use does have some leakage, and for the most part though it's a very good approximation of a, but you need to bias it towards it uh, actually turning on, so what I've done here is added an orange LED to give me a 1.9ish volts here on the, um, the bottom end of the sense diode, in this case it's a 1N4148, and again here's the table from uh, 1 gig to 10 ohms. Once you start getting down to small resistances, you can see I put a 100 ohm in series here with the, the unknown resistance to stop blowing up the diode. And uh, once the current starts to get quite high, the warming in the diode makes these numbers drift around a lot. But for the for small numbers, it works pretty well. You can see, uh, I didn't bother to calculate the slope for this one, but it's, uh, it's one version of the circuit, but it's more complicated than the JFET ones, so really I wouldn't bother, I'd just go with the JFET version. And this is what I actually ended up with. I ended up using the uh, 2N5484 as a diode, so I, I hooked the source and drain together. And I used the, the gate source diode as the sense diode. This works particularly well because the when I measured, a, I used the, the first circuit to bootstrap my measurements. So I measured the leakage of a 1N4148, reverse biased, at about 9 to 10 volts. And the leakage was about 9 nanoamps. And when I warmed it up with my soldering iron, it went much greater than that. When I cooled it down with freezer spray, naturally it went down, consequence of uh, the physics of the device. But the, uh, the JFET was much, much better. So I decided to use the JFET. I didn't actually quantify how much better, but it was so much enormously better that I decided that would do. I've used the, uh, the PN4117A as the, the buffering JFET, 56K source resistor big capacitor here to try and smooth out the crap that ends up being picked up by the high impedance front end. I added this uh, this small 2 nano 2 capacitor. This is a polystyrene capacitor which I selected for extremely low leakage, you know, around the picoamp or better region, particularly once I cleaned it with some alcohol. 
uh, you might want to omit this and, and just deal with a little bit of ripple that you'll get here because you know, the output on the source is quite low impedance so it can drive even into a fairly large capacitance it can picks up hum here and, and rubbish from the, the high impedance input when it's measuring high resistances I uh, put the 100 ohm resistor in here which you know, vaguely protects the front end from, from transients I wouldn't go combing your hair near it, you might kill it but uh, it means if you short the input you at least get sensible numbers as opposed to a dead diode and probably you know, cooked other pieces of the circuit this is the calibration table, this is the table here that I got out of it you can see uh, when it's open completely open you get about 0.586 volts on the source so that's essentially infinite input impedance although in reality it's probably the leakage through the, cir through the circuit board because I've got it here on a plastic circuit board I'm actually surprised it works as well as it does right now it's sitting about 0.743 volts the, the leads are sort of dangling down here touching and uh, obviously if I touch it with my skin you'll notice it goes up to about 1.1 volts ish which is a couple of hundred kilo ohms kind of region um, interestingly I can actually resolve the 200 mega ohms per square approximately of these kind of uh, anti-static bags and um, well, let's see we've got 10 meg resistor, 22 meg resistor, I've got a gig ohm resistor somewhere in the junk yeah. I can't find it now, but uh, and this is 23 gig ohms, which Charles Wenzel was kind enough to send me, and I use that as the uh, that's the best point that I've got so far. That's about 400 pico amperes, roughly, uh, is the low point. But I'll show you the graph in a minute. It's clearly capable of going down to about 12th power resistance or better. And uh, for for the simplicity of the circuit, it's it's well worth the build. You can see I said here it floats about 0.61. I'm sure if I built it um, using air wiring, if all of this was basically, all of these connections were in mid-air, not touching anything, and I cleaned it with alcohol, probably get uh, a much better baseline, kind of approaching this 0.5-ish kind of volts, for the, which is what happens when you short it. You can see when I, uh, when I short the actual input here straight to the rail, then you get, you know, whatever the limit is, to, what, about 90 milliamps through so 100 ohms gives you 1.294 volts uh, heating in the diode starts to make that drift if you're not careful so you shouldn't do it for too long I think it also possibly exceeds the uh, the gate current rating of this device so you might want to make this larger in any case you're only really interested in the larger values because these ones are you know, up to 10 megs is easy to measure with a multimeter without too much of a problem so you could easily put a 10 or 100k resistor in here to protect it um, I chose 100 ohms just so I could get a, a nice, fairly linear reading down to about a kilo ohm where it starts to become significant. You know, anything round about, like most things in electronics, 1% is easy, 0.1% uh, is you know, starting to get challenging, but it's pretty easy to get 1% readings out of most things. Alrighty, let's have a look at the actual graphs. Uh -huh. Again, apologies, I, uh, my printer is out of order. You can see here, this is the. Uh, I ended up using resistance uh, instead of current because it's just, you know, resistance is simple. You get the device out, you don't have to try and measure it. It's wonderfully linear. Uh, I can actually um, come up with a fit line that, that's almost perfectly straight, as you can see. And this is, goes from second order, um, you know, say power of 2 resistance up to power of 11 resistance. This down here is the 400 uh, nano ampere region. Uh, 400 picoampere region, sorry, this is around 9 nanoamperes, I think, and up here into milliamps, so huge range of resistances. If you wanted to build something to measure um, leakage currents just quickly, you, know, you might want to make a tiny device with a two prongs sticking out of it that you can just touch to things and measure. It gives you a rough idea of the um, resistance per square for coatings. Uh, things like anti-static bags is a good example, but also um, you know, coatings on... Uh, on various surfaces you might want to be playing around with. It's the main reason why I built it actually. I want to want to play with uh, some high resistance coatings for some particle detectors. This is the uh, the graphs fusing the um, the 1N4148 diode and as you can see here they start to flatten off. This is down around uh, well, around that region where you start getting down into hundreds of pico amperes. I think this is caused by leakage and by the diode being rather non-ideal down there. You can also note that it starts to compress up here when I used um, the 2N5484 
JFET, and I think this is also caused by the JFET running out of uh, basically starting to saturate. So, yeah, yeah, if you do, you know, sit down with Ohm's law, you can calculate a, a fairly good resistance. But the um, the PN four double one seven A looks like a pretty good device for this kind of uh, this kind of use. Anyway, if I uh, if I build it into a, a a more practical unit, maybe with a moving coil meter, I'll I'll post an update and I'll put some more details on the website about how it all works. Alrighty, that's about it for this video. It's uh, gone on for about ten minutes. Um, Re, my wife, she she's back at home now, um, is recovering quite nicely, so she's out of the woods. Thank you all for your concern, uh, and I've passed on your thoughts. All right, uh, now it's catch-up time. Uh, this is obviously day eight, and I'm sure it's the ninth now, so I'll have to uh, have to catch up over the weekend with a few more videos. We'll see how we go. Alrighty, have fun.